Tier two. two. Spoiler, I already just gave it to you. The only threat to God, which I'm assuming is Satan. So are you on the air right now referring to Mark Andrews as Satan? <laughs> I did not put that go on record right now. Like, <laughs> he is the Antichrist. He has taken over. Uh, <laughs> not, not at all. I don't know where that That's came why from. He will never host <laughs> yes. The uh, the only guy that could be a real threat, though, is Andrews. And the reason why that's the case is it was in 2021. He actually did outscore Travis Kelsey. Why might he actually be able to do that again? Well, he probably won't. Let's just get that off the chest. But tight end five, seven, one, and four in the last four. So he had that monster year in 2021. We've seen it before. We know Lamar Jackson loves it. Why I'm much higher on Andrews this year as compared to what we saw last year. Why do I think he could rebound and be the clear-cut number two tight end again? Is Air Raid Todd Munkin arrive? And we've talked about this on the quarterback show and why I'm back all in on Lamar Jackson again. Todd Munkin, 16th, 3rd, 4th, and 19th in pass attempts. Top 10 in pass TDs in three of his four years. Top four in passing yards in two of his four. I, I mean, this guy loves to air it out compared to Greg Roman, 32nd, 32nd, 9th, and 28th in pass attempts. So just on a sheer volume point, this is going to be a much bigger aerial pot. Granted, he's going to have some more mouths to contend with. It has been the clear-cut Mark Andrews number one and really nobody else even close to him on this team. Now you have Odell. They draft Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman. We got some good weapons here. I still think Mark Andrews will be that number one target in this offense. We've seen Todd Munkin, yes, in the NFL. Those were his pass attempts per game, but also at Georgia when he was working over there. His tight ends were thriving as the main veins of the passing attack there. So he just knows how to use all his weapons Munkin does in a pass-happier attack. So I think Mark Andrews, I don't think he'll be the tight end one, but I think he's a very, very good bet to finish as the next guy behind Travis Kelsey. That's why he's a tier by himself. Agree with all that. When we move, so we've had two tiers, each occupied by one guy, and we're actually going to hit our third tier that is a one guy tier. So we have a very clear pecking order one, two, three, and then we start uh, actually getting some groups where you can maybe make an argument. Um, tier three, maybe there is another threat to God after all. I, I tried really hard to uh, think of something clever to put after that. The only stuff I came up with was uh, too offensive to actually put on the air. So I just, uh, went with your banner. Um, and that's TJ Hawkinson. Uh, I don't think he's another threat to God after all, but point taken that he is the number three guy. And I could even uh, see making a case for him being the number two guy. Yeah, absolutely. You look at all his numbers last year. I mean, it's almost two across the board. Obviously, Kelsey occupying pretty much number one spot in whatever you look at. But Hawkinson, second in targets, second in receptions, second in receiving yards, second in PPR points per game. And it was really just spurned, as most of you probably realize, by his trade to the Vikings. You look at what he did while he was the Lions. He had one humongous game, nearly 40 points. His season high, actually, was in week four against Seattle. But other than that, he didn't have a single other double-digit day. He was just meh. And then he comes over to the Vikings, sees a huge volume spike. So whereas a, he was a tight end one, just 33% of his games with the Lions, he was a tight end one 71% of the time with the Vikings. He goes from averaging 6.1 targets and 26 catches in seven games with the Lions to then averaging 8.6 targets. That's elite volume for a tight end, having 60 catches in his 10 games, six catches per game. That's also elite. And then that doesn't even factor in. The last time we saw him, 10 catches and 129 yards in that playoff game, against the Giants. So Hawkinson really found his groove here. He's the clear-cut number two behind Justin Jefferson and finds all the space in the world when you have that type of weapon commanding defensive attention. I think it's more of the same. Just great weapon for, for Kirk Cousins, who loves to dink and dunk it. Very high percentage guy. Loved. I, I think he's only going to get better in his second offseason now with more time to continue to grow in that offense. I love TJ Hawkinson. Definitely the clear cut three. I, you could maybe lump him and Andrews in the same tier the more I think about it. Like there is. Yeah, the more I think about it, yeah. I mean, I, I would almost lean Hawkinson to, if I'm yeah. being honest. Um, so, yeah, I, I would, if I were doing this, I'd probably have him in the same tier and I might even have Hawkinson too. I, I you yeah, know, I, maybe. I, I, I like him a lot. You know, six catches a game um, for a tight end, that's 102 catches. That's not, not bad, right? That's, that's a shit ton of catches. I mean, uh, over 100 catches for a tight end is very, very rare. And Hawkinson, definitely a real threat to continue there. And they, they got rid of Adam Thielen. So, I mean, even more volume potentially up for grabs too there. Yeah, there's. I, I think I'm going to have to merge these two tiers. There's definitely some things I learned while doing my rankings. We'll talk about where I made this as I dove in deep for this research here. Uh, but, yeah, Hawkinson, maybe this is one just on the fly. He probably does belong in that same tier. 
here with Andrews. I have been taking Andrews earlier in these underdog drafts. He goes right around the end of third, early fourth. Sometimes even he falls to, whereas Hawkinson's pretty clearly like a, a late fourth, early fifth type of guy. So there is a gap in their price, but I don't know that there necessarily should be. So I am a really big fan of TJ Hawkinson. Yeah, and definitely the only other guy that maybe could see the volume to approach Kelsey's status. Not, not threaten it, but see yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not banking on that. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments. Check out some more videos and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below.